Oh, son of a bitch, bitch, uh, son of a bitch, bitch, son of a bitch, 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 uh, gun. <laughs> you thought I was gonna say uh, son of a bitch, didn't you? Our top story tonight. Famed television actor and star of television's Star Trek, William Shatner, still valiantly holding on in his fight to remain undead. Welcome to Film Rants, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first episode of Film Rants, the number one film rant show shot entirely in my living room. I'm your host, E. Adam Thomas, and this episode is part one of a three-part rant about my favorite genre of films, giant monsters fucking shit up for tiny people. Monster movies, also known in Japan as Kaiju Aiga. See how smart I am? <laughs> I speak Japanese. Well, two words of Japanese, and those were it. First on our roster is 1933's epic introduction into the genre, Miriam C. Cooper's masterpiece, King Kong. Made on a budget of $670,000, which was extravagant for a 1933 film, King Kong tells the story of a shady filmmaker, Carl Denham, who decides to shoot his newest film on a remote tropical island. Taking his newly found ingenue, Andero, played by Fay Ray, to this location turns out to be a critical mistake as she becomes the object of passion for both Denim's assistant Jack Dis Driscoll and a gigantic great ape known to the islanders as King Kong. When the big monkey carries her off into the jungle, Denim, Driscoll, and their intrepid crewmates risk life and limb to rescue the young lady. Eventually, Denim decides to capture Kong and bring him to the Big Apple with predictably disastrous results. Personally, I love this film, and when we get to the Rantometer, you'll see just how much, but it does have one big thing going against it. Modern audiences. That's right, you guys. You see, nobody today wants to see a giant monster movie shot in 4-3 aspect ratio in black and white using an 18-inch tall posable puppet as a 40-foot-tall eighth wonder of the world. No. Thanks to Spielberg, Emmerich and Devlin, and J.J. Abrams, you bastards all want your monsters CGI'd with big explosions, lots of blood, and as little plot or character development as humanly possible. You'd rather watch Pacific Rim with foreign actors trying to play Americans with accents that cannot be accurately classified in any linguistic database. This movie is a piece of fucking art, folks. It's the first time anyone had ever attempted a major motion picture on this scale of technical difficulty. If I told you half the shit they had to go through just on the multi-layered process matte photography alone, you'd literally shit yourselves like an Asian school schoolgirl facing a giant panty-ripping tentacle demon for the first time. This was 1933, folks. Eighty fucking years ago! The motion picture camera itself was barely even 40 years old at the time. The level of labor and painstaking attention to detail is the stuff of cinematic legend. Cinema history owes a huge debt of gratitude to this film and to the visual effects and ref created and refined by Willis O'Brien, who eight years earlier brought Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's classic tale, The Lost World, to life using techniques that would be revolutionized and refined in King Kong. For all you assholes out there who can't stand to watch a monster movie unless the monster comes out of your supercomputer, I declare you deserve to die, go to heaven, and get repetitively cock-punched by O'Brien a million times. This man was the inspiration for pioneers like Ray Harryhausen, Steven Spielberg, and Peter Jackson. <coughs> Excuse me. You people make me sick, literally. If they can respect a man's uh, amazing accomplishments, the least you can do is use your inside voice when you want to say, Fuck, man, this sucks because, like, it, you know, it's in black and white and stuff, and, and they, only, they only spent $670,000 on it. 
Get a bag of giant ape foreskins, you ignorant fucktards. Sorry. <sighs> All right. Let's look at the old rantometer, shall we? Actually, it's over here. This film gets top marks for both artistry and coolness, and a four in weirdness because, well, let's be honest, it's a movie about a giant fucking monkey. I'm grudgingly giving this film one half of a razor blade on the suck factor only because some of the acting is very amateurish, but only because some of the actors were admittedly amateurs. <laughs> that brings the total of this film to 13.5 one and a half points shy of a perfect score. Next time, in part two, we're going to look at Ishiro Honda's masterpiece from 1954, the original Gojira. Okay, so I know three words in Japanese. Or, as he's been come to be known here in the United States, Godzilla, or godzilla depending. Expect to get yourselves ripped a new asshole on that one, too. Until next time, this is E. Adam Thomas, and remember to respect the big monkey! <laughs> that sounded so much cooler in my head. Night, folks! Son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs>